Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and I'm excited to give you guys a quick overview on one of the brand new motherboards specifically for the X99 chipset and the latest generation of Intel's Haswell E-based processors. So in this overview we're just going to give you a couple of the key features and functions as well as some of the specifications that are on the X99 Deluxe board. It's going to be a perfect fit for you guys that are out there that are going to be looking to build a high performance X99 based system. So with that let's go ahead and take a closer look at the board. All right, guys, so taking a look right here at the board, you can see that one of the biggest things uh, that we've changed from the previous generation is the overall aesthetic. The aesthetic introduces a white overall design uh, as compared to our previous generation, which featured gold. Uh, but we still go ahead and keep uh, the very kind of monolithic and the monochromatic color, uh, color scheme that complements the white aesthetic. So we've got black and we've got gray to complement this really clean white accenting that you see that goes uh, along the entire side of the board, as well as uh, complemented across the overall PCH, as well as for the VR. RM heatsink. Overall, I think it's going to look great for you guys that are looking to build a brand new system, especially for you guys that are considering uh, the latest generations of chassis and other components uh, that have gone ahead and utilized white as their primary color. But also, equally, this white makes a perfect fit for uh, the wide, expansive range of components that are out there in the marketplace that are utilizing gray and black as their primary color set. So all the way around, I think it's a great look for this new board. But with that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the actual uh, board and its features and specifications. So taking a closer look here at the board, uh, one of the most immediate things, of course, is going to be the socket in itself. This is a 2011 socket, but version 3, specifically designed for Haswell E-based processors. Uh, one of the things that's actually very special about this socket is that it's a specialized design by ASUS. It differs from the traditional reference-based design. And ultimately, what we've done there is incorporated our kind of uh, engineering know-how to be able to produce a socket that's going to give you uh, greater performance and greater stability, especially when it comes to voltage stability and overclocking, whether it's going to be for the actual, uh, what's referred to as the cache uh, for the actual CPU, uh, providing greater total system efficiency, as well as in relation to DRAM overclocking. So uh, for you guys that are wondering as far as compatibility, compatibility is exactly the same with previous generation socket 2011 processors. So any of you guys that are wondering about water cooling or different types of cooling solutions, you're good to go in terms of keeping the current cooling solution in play. Although keep in mind that this CPU part does run a little bit hotter, so you have to account for that increase in terms of the overall temperatures. Uh, when we take a look uh, to the right and to the left of the socket, we're going to see a coarse uh, quad channel memory support, just like in previous generation X79. This is much higher end than the standard dual channel configurations that you see on the Z97 based chipset. Um, and on this generation, of course, we have a big introduction to something entirely new, and that's going to be DDR4. DDR4 is going to be providing a significantly higher frequencies at lower voltages, and a lot more that's built in that inherently is going to provide you with a more reliable uh, and an overall more future proof uh, memory design, especially as we go to larger and larger DRAM capacities. For you guys that are wondering about in terms of DRAM overclocking, the board is fantastic as always. We've done a great deal amount of work both on the UEFI, the firmware side, as well as of course on the layout and the topology side to make sure that you've got outstanding overclocking capabilities. Uh, these DRAM modules right here, for example, they're DDR4-2800 DDR and actually already in our, uh, in our validation we've already exceeded 3000. So all the way around, you guys are good to go there. Next up, we want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about the, what surrounds the actual CPU and the DRAM and helps to give us overall stability and performance when we're pushing the board and that's going to be the power delivery and the cooling solution. So let's go ahead and take a closer look there. So taking a look here closer at the VRM assembly, or for you guys that aren't aware of the, what that is, that's going to be the actual voltage regulation modules and essentially the power delivery of the motherboard. Now for this generation, similar to Z97 and Z87 before it, uh, the Haswell E processor actually builds in what's referred to as the fiber or the power delivery and control unit, uh, which would tradi traditionally sit externally. Uh, that being noted, ASUS still continues to implement our dual digital power design. So we have digital power and delivery control that helps to work in tandem with the fiber that's built onto the CPU. That gives you a robust amount of options within the UEFI for tweaking and tuning, whether it's for overclocking or efficiency. And we have digital power delivery and control uh, for both uh, banks in terms of the actual DDR4 memory. And that's very important uh, because it can work in conjunction with the Intel memory controller for the best performance and the best system efficiency, especially in relation to power consumption. And you've got a huge amount of flexibility and control of being able to tweak and tune once again the memory, especially with the headroom that we're seeing within DDR4 memory modules. Uh, DRAM overclocking is going to be something that's going to be quite exciting uh, and with the controls that we've built in with that digital power delivery and control in the UEFI, it's actually quite easy. Now, in terms of the overall cooling, 
Uh, with a platform like this where you have such a high TDP, you've got a huge amount of cores, you've got high frequencies that you're going to be looking at, and especially if you're going to be overclocking, you always want to ensure that you've got great stability, reliability, and thermal effectiveness. And we've definitely taken care of you in that regard. The unit features a full uh, actual heat pipe implementation here that runs actually from the primary VRM heatsink that's here and actually goes all the way into a secondary heatsink, which if you go ahead and uh, turn the board here to the side, you can see goes directly and is exposed to the back plane of the board. Uh, that's advantageous because, of course, that can work with the exhaust uh, mechanism uh, in place, so we can overall ensure that we have a great flow of heat coming off from the VRM. Now, the VRM in itself, of course, always features class-leading design. We've got ultra-high quality components here, 10K rated capacitors, super high uh, quality inductors here. They're actually entirely new, and you if you can actually take a look at those little inductors there, you'll even see that they've got a little bit of finning, them to, uh, finning to them to help to improve thermal performance. And overall, their power characteristics along with the MOSFET and driver packages that we have on here are extremely high end. So whether you're looking to go extremely efficient and run stock or you're looking to aggressively overclock, you know, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8 gigahertz, no problems on this board. So moving past the CPU and the power delivery and the overall thermal solution, uh, tying in with thermals and always an important consideration on any enthusiast class motherboard is going to be fan control functionality. So for some of you guys, you guys might be familiar with the fact that ASUS pretty much has the best fan controls in the industry, uh, which are coined by our fan expert set of technologies, which is a set of hardware-based, firmware-based uh, actual design implementations on the motherboard. Now continuing from previous generations, what that pretty much means is that we have the most extensive fan control functionality. If you want to be able to control your fans pretty much every single which way, you can do that on an ASUS board. So this motherboard actually features a total of six onboard four pin in headers. Um, and they're located actually in great locations so that you can run them effectively to where you need to uh, for all your associated uh, fans that are in your system as well as for your CPU cooling solution. Now the great thing about this is that although they're all four pin based, they're fully compatible and actually fully controllable for both three pin and four pin. So whether it's a DC based fan or whether it's a PWM fan, you have complete control flexibility both in the operating system as well as in the UEFI. Now if new for this generation, we've gone ahead and actually incorporated our Z97 class of improvements and what that means is that we have the ability to allow you to map the temperature input uh, for the actual fan header. What that means is, take for instance here in the top corner, we have our CPU um, actually fan headers, and those would traditionally be controlled by the CPU temperature input, which is what we would want. They would respond to the CPU temperature. But if you take for instance maybe the chassis fan header that's located here, the chassis fan header that's here, you may not actually want those to respond to the CPU. You may want them to actually respond to maybe the PCH. So as actually that's doing a lot of work with your hard drive away, then the actual fans will respond to that temperature. Uh, now for this generation, we've gone ahead and actually incorporated quite a bit of mapping points. So you have everything from the CPU to the motherboard to the PCH to the VRM, uh, but we've gone ahead and even expand upon it further. What we have for the Deluxe is actually going to be this specialized fan extension hub module that we have. And we've gone ahead and put in a lot of work in here. This is not just a pure uh, passive adapter in terms of just extending additional controls. There's actually logic that's built on here. So we actually have true additional three uh, fan headers that are on here that would supplement the nine, excuse me, the six that are already on the board. So that gives you a total of nine fan headers uh, that are fully configurable, once again, through the operating system or through the uh, UEFI. And in addition to that, uh, there's also, as we take a look here, uh, next to each one of those fan headers is actually an optional temp sensor. So with those three optional temp sensors, you can go ahead and put your own thermal resistor uh, connected to that and then maybe put on the back of your graphics card, put on top of the hard drive, maybe connect it to a certain part of the chassis. But you can have three additional temperature inputs that those fans can respond to. And the great thing is that because this connects directly to the motherboard, th those temperature input sources also become mappable on the onboard headers that are on the board itself. So that means that uh, if you wanted the chassis fan headers to respond to one of these imp temperature input sources, you could go ahead and do that. Now wrapping this all up, we still of course maintain what's referred to as our fan expertise, fan uh, calibration technology, which means for every single one of these connected headers, we have the ability to automatically cycle through the minimum and the maximum operating values of the fan so that we can calibrate it perfectly so you get the best balance of cooling and acoustics. So if you want that fan to be utterly silent and stop operating when you're doing nothing but just browsing the internet to ramping up and effectively cooling your system when you're gaming or when you're doing some content creation, you're good to go. So all the way around, best fan controls that are out there. So with that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at a lot of the uh, storage connectivity that's offered on this Deluxe.
So moving along with storage here on the X99 Deluxe, there's a ton of options and actually pretty much it covers just about every single storage option that is currently available in the marketplace. So we're going to quickly recap these for you uh, throughout the board. So right here at the top, you've got an integrated uh, M.2 uh, con connection. So this will allow you to go ahead and install any form of M.2 based SSD up to actually a by 4 based SSD. So this is going to offer extremely high throughput and performance and actually significantly higher performing than even two SSDs in a RAID-based configuration. So if you're looking for pretty much the fastest single type of SSD solutions, it's going to be here in this M.2 based connectivity option, which can directly leverage PCI Express as well as SATA-based solutions. So all the way around, you've got a huge amount of flexibility. For the majority of users though, you guys are going to be utilizing SATA-based connectivity and XX9, X99 totally delivers in that regard. So if we go ahead and take a look here, you can see that pretty much you see just an entire row of connectivity available to you. So we've got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, a total of 12 uh, SATA 6G ports that are automatically integrated onto the board and good to go. But in addition to uh, those actual connections, there's gone ahead and been some improvements in giving you more flexibility and more future proofing. So if we turn the board to the side, you're going to see that actually the SATA connections look a little bit different. Going from the top, that looks like a traditional connection and traditional, traditional, traditional. When we get down here to the bottom, though, they're going to look a little bit different, and that's because these are actual SATA Express. So the board does come included also with SATA Express SSD support. Now, SATA Express will require actually two of those connections, so that means you can run two SATA Express based SSDs, and if you're not utilizing a SATA Express based SSD, then it would be four individual SATA 6G ports, hence the total of 12 that's available as part of the, ch uh, the chipset. So all the way around, a huge degree of flexibility when you consider that we've already talked about that we have M.2, we've got SATA 6G, and we have SATA Express. Uh, in addition to that, though, the board still actually offers even more flexibility. So if we go ahead and take a look here, uh, we have another accessory that's included with our deluxe board, which is the Hyper M.2 expansion card. So if you don't want to utilize the integrated vertical M.2 uh, option that's on the motherboard, you can do it through this adding card right here. And it also uh, supports very easily all forms of standard M.2 base SSDs up to 2280, which would be probably for most of you guys the most common solution. And all you need to do is go ahead and plug that into one of the associated PCI Express slots that are on the motherboard. And of course, that's another option, whether you're going to be utilizing an M.2 expansion card like the one that we include, or you buy a PCI Express uh, base SSD, you are good to go. Now, if we go ahead and move lastly down here to the bottom, uh, this is a, an external form of storage, and we'll go ahead and be covering actually the I.O. richness that this board has to offer. But with this board also does feature Thunderbolt connectivity available to you guys. So for users that are looking for high performance external storage options, that is also available to them through the Thunderbolt uh, 2 EX card that we, uh, that we currently have available in the marketplace. So with that, we're going to go ahead and keep moving this along and take a look at the overall uh, PCIe connectivity that the board has to offer. So moving along to the PCIe uh, connectivity that the board has to offer, essentially the slot expansion, X99 along with the CPU is one of the biggest benefits is going to be the increased number of PCI lanes. Either it's going to be 28 lanes provided by the entry level CPU or as many as 40 lanes. And when you've got that many lanes, you've got a huge degree of flexibility. So the board natively supports, of course, uh, single GPUs, two-way configurations, whether it's SLI or Crossfire, as well as three-way configurations of SLI and Crossfire. Um, now, if we go ahead and quickly take a look here from the top, you can see you've got a physical by 16, then a physical by 4, physical by 16, physical by 16, physical by 16, and another physical by 16. This has really uh, been done in a way that gives you a huge amount of flexibility to be able to go ahead and have spacing in between dual slot uh, graphics cards. If you have those installed, still giving you airflow, but giving you more expansion flexibility. In addition to that, we've also gone ahead and added in some quick um, elements to make installation a little bit easier for you. If we take a look right here uh, at this little LED switch that we have, we actually have a switch that will allow you to go ahead and set it either into 2x or 3x. Many users actually question what is the correct slot to utilize whether I'm going in two-way configurations or in three-way configurations. So with the flip of this switch, this will automatically light up actually LEDs that are in the front of these associated slots, allowing you to know which slots to go ahead and use. So a very simple and easy way to be able to maximize the installation uh, for two-way or three-way GPU-based configurations. So with that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at uh, audio that we have here on this Deluxe. 
So moving beyond PCI Express, uh, we're just going to quickly talk about sound here. And you can go ahead and see in this section right here, you've got a lot of capacitors that look different from the 10K rated capacitors that we have on the motherboard. The reason being is though those are actual audio grade capacitors, Nichicon audio grade capacitors, which are part of our Crystal Sound 2 design. What that essentially means is that we have an isolated section of the motherboard uh, to allow it to have superior performance and achieve the higher specifications of what the codec is actually ideally suited for. In addition to that, we have an operational amplifier on there to be able to improve driving strength to headphones, as well as we've gone ahead and packaged in a complete software suite to be able to automatically actually profile uh, in-ear monitors, over-the-ear headphones, or desktop speakers, so that when you go ahead and actually plug in to either the line out or to the front headphone connection, you actually have quick pairing options to those type of actually playback devices. Uh, so this overall gives you a better experience when you're looking to play either your music, movies, or games and take advantage of Crystal Sound 2.0. So with that, let's go ahead and quickly take a look at some of the I.O. connectivity that the board has to offer. So moving things along here, we just want to quickly recap on what's the type of connectivity they have available to you. We already talked about storage, we talked about PCI Express, and now we want to talk about your normal uh, I.O. And when it comes to the I.O., the Deluxe pretty much has uh, all the highest end I.O. specifications that are out there. So you can see right down here at the bottom, we've got two front USB 3 headers, so that's fantastic for users that want to be able to go ahead and have the latest generation of chassis that have four front USB 3 ports. Some chassis have two, and maybe you want to put a high-speed USB 3 card reader on there. You are good to go. But where we, things get really interesting is once we take a look here at the back I.O. So we're going to go ahead and turn the board around, and you can see that we've got a ton of connectivity. So uh, right here at the top, you can see that we've got USB 3 as highlighted by blue. But if you take a look all the way down to the bottom, you've got USB 3 across the board. So you've got two four, six, eight, ten. Ten USB 3 ports along with the two additional ports that are on the internal header is going to give you a total of 14, so that's a ton of connectivity. We go ahead and maintain actually a legacy two USB 2 ports there uh, for optimal compatibility for certain devices like some printers, uh, keyboards and mice, or certain other devices. So you still have that flexibility of ensuring the best interoperability and compatibility. Uh, here at the top, you've got two Intel Gigabit Ethernet ports that are built on board. It's fantastic for users that are looking to either have teaming, best throughput, best performance, or maybe a secondary ISP service. If we go all the way down here, down to the bottom, we've got tons of uh, networking connectivity beyond the two Intel Gigabit Ethernet points uh, with integrated A2.11ac 3x3. This is the first motherboard that's been released on the market that features a 3x3 wireless based connection. When paired with a compatible router, uh, such as our AC66U or AC87U, or any of our other high performance 811ac routers, you're going to get an insane level of throughput and range and performance. Uh, this is going to be, in many situations, uh, considerably faster than traditional 10100 Ethernet and can offer extremely low latency for gaming and very, very high high throughput uh, for file transfers, uh, for streaming, or for any number of other networking purposes. Directly below that, of course, we have a Toslink optical output that fully supports DTS Connect for outputting multi-channel audio. And then we, of course, have our line level uh, audio outputs with gold plating to help to minimize oxidation. And these, of course, work in conjunction with the Crystal Sound uh, 2 implementation to overall give us a better experience in our music, movies, and games. Lastly, quickly touching on the USB ports, uh, we also do maintain our USB 3 boost technology to improve performance for storage devices and USB Charger Plus, which allow you to quick charge your smartphones and your tablets. So wrapping things up, guys, we've talked about a lot of different aspects when it comes to this X99 board, and you can pretty much see that it's packed to the gills with pretty much every feature and function and specification you could really want on an ultra high enthusiast and motherboard. And it really sets the bar for you guys that are looking to build a really a high-end enthusiast desktop, uh, which really is going to be uh, well-suited for just about any task, whether it's going to be content creation, general productivity, or course gaming. Uh, when you take a look, of course, at the specifications that have been built in, you're really future-proofing yourself to be able to have a system uh, that's going to be outstanding and extremely high performance right now and also serve you literally years into the future. Uh, keep in mind that this is a type of platform that as of right now is going to have the highest level of cores, highest level of cache, highest number of PCI Express lanes, and is the only also DDR4 solution that's currently on the marketplace. Now we haven't talked about software and there's a whole lot more in terms of specialized features and functions and we'll definitely cover those more in depth on our PCDIY website as well as our PCDIY YouTube channel. So I definitely recommend if you want to find out 
out more, make sure to check out those associated channels. But what I want to let you guys know about is a very specialized feature that we do have on the software package which works in concert with our hardware design and that's going to be our five-way optimization technology. For a lot of you guys out there when you look to go building a system and you want to be able to quickly and easily take advantage of all the key benefits and design that we've put into the board, sometimes you may not know actually how to go ahead and overclock the CPU, you may not know how to take advantage of all those advanced level of fan controls and you may not know how to actually maybe optimize your programs to even work in conjunction with all those things but we've gone ahead and taken care of that all for you within the five-way optimization and as little as a simple step of opening up our AI Suite 3 program clicking the actual five-way optimization button we will automatically overclock your CPU specific to your cooling solution to the actual margin of your CPU to the actual specifications of your memory and even to the actual variance of the power quality offered by your power supply and the power that's actually provided in your home. Uh, when you put that all together, you're going to get actually a system-specific overclock that's ensured for reliability and stability. It's going to automatically calibrate all your fans for cool and quiet operation. It'll even go ahead and make actually energy efficient optimizations to different devices to help you save power over the actual duration of your system. And for you guys that really want to maximize performance and take advantage of all the hardware that's on the system, our latest generation of Turbo app will allow you to actually optimize conditional parameters of operation for the frequency for the processor specific to any program that you want. So if you want to have more cores and faster frequencies for Adobe Premiere versus Chrome or versus Battlefield 4, that's all available to you within our AI Suite 3 application. So as I noted, if you guys want a lot more information about those features and functions and a whole lot more that Deluxe has to offer, make sure to check out the PCDIY YouTube channel and the website. With that, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them here on the channel along with any feedback that you might have. And as always, make sure to share, favorite, like, and subscribe. As always, thank you.